Blog Talk Radio. Here at ACO Radio, American Communications Online, or any affiliated stations or websites are not responsible for what guests, hosts, and callings may say. All programming is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. Hello, world. Welcome aboard, all you ground troops spinning around smartly on the planet. We're back. We're excited to have you. Uh, We're going to ask you all to welcome uh, other people that we're meeting new. Uh, We're forming American Communications Online, a community and cyberspace culture together with ACO Club and Richard T. Knight. And he will be here any time. And he's invited uh, a new person to join us. Her name is Marcy Kosich. I hope I'm saying that right. And I put a little picture of Richard and Marcy Kosich in our slideshow today on our blogtalkradio.com. If you're listening, all you bloggers out there, all you blog talk people, And I know in spirituality, you guys uh, like to have us do readings, and we're going to do those tomorrow. But today, I'd like to get to know Richard better. Uh, We've only been speaking, I believe, since 2021, after 2020. You know, hindsight's 2020. And we've been here many, many times uh, as uh, radio hosts for Blog Talk Radio, and we have introduced a lot of events, a lot of speakers at these events, and a lot of authors, and we're going to get back involved again since this is after the uh, year 2020. So we're going to say that hindsight is 2020 and invite others to join us on our radio shows And Wednesdays, we're going to see if we can hold the energy with other people talking about metaphysics. So we're inviting all you metaphysicians, and uh, we're going to do our best to incorporate some new co-hosts that actually aren't new to Blog Talk. But let me see if this is Richard Knight or Marcy. Hi, uh, is this Richard or Marcy? No? Just listening? Okay. Hello. Okay. Uh, hold, hold on. Uh, yes. Who, oh, I'm Marcy? sorry. I thought you were having readings tonight. Oh, uh, well, we can maybe. Let me. No. Just, no. Okay. I start tomorrow night. Uh, this is going to be for those of you that are growing in your spiritual growth. And Richard T. Knight has invited Marcy Kosick. So we're going to catch up on all your talents and skills tonight. So, Richard, I did hear you somewhere. Are you out there in the ethers? <laughs> yes, I most assuredly am. Oh, good. Okay, somebody answered your call. Interesting. I don't see your friend Marcy, but go ahead, Richard, if you don't mind. You've done radio for years. Introduce yourself, if you don't mind. Help me out here. <laughs> all right. Uh, my name is Dr. Richard T. Knight. I am a theologian a religious scientist, a metaphysician, and a doctorate in divinity. Uh, I came into this world completely awakened with a memory of exactly who I am and where I came from. My disconnect or memory loss in being in cooperation or connectedness with the source of all, mother and father, God, or whatever term that you want to use to divine a higher source than ourselves. I have been a Samant of language since the age of five. I was abducted by aliens at the age of five. Um, They put a tracking device in my nose, which remained there until I physically had it surgically removed at the age of 35. So um, I have been aware with 14 senses. I do paranormal investigations. My life has been an enclave of all kinds of supernatural, paranormal, spiritual, spirit-filled adventures, encounters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, now I am 65 years young, so I've been at this for 60 years, believe it or not. Um, I have read the Tarot for over 50 years. Uh, I started reading the Tarot when I was 12. I also do channeling. I have channeled poetry. I have channeled advice to others. 
I have even incorporated the voices of other given individuals, be they spirit beings from other realms or spirit beings from other dimensions, ascended masters, uh, and even occasionally uh, a wise one from a dimension that they have not defined specifically. Uh, Then the metaphysical movement since around 1960, well, actually around 65, because at 60 I was only five years out, but anyway. In 65, at the age of 10, uh, I began doing uh, psychic interventions. I began doing all kinds of different things. I became involved with a group that was named uh, the Temple in the Stars, which met at San Jose Community College, and we would meet in their music room. And there we would have all kinds of guests from all different paths of the paranormal and supernatural and even spiritual paths and metaphysical paths of all kinds that would put on all kinds of venues for us in regards to making presentations. And then in turn, we as a group, probably about maybe a third of us, would meet at the coffee house afterwards and discuss what we had been presented to us and ask each other questions and gain understanding therefrom and all that kind of good stuff. Um, Died and came back in the physical when I was 14. I was legally dead for 33 minutes. I went before the the face of God, one could say. At least that's what I had been programmed to believe God would look like. And, of course, he showed me the book of life and detailed that, you know, I had promised to do a lot of things in life and had not accomplished them, so therefore I needed to come back here. And the one thing that I had asked as a favor of God was to show me who and what I truly am, at which time I was allowed to step consciously out of my spiritual self and look back upon my spiritual self, and I was nothing more than an Aurora Borealis uh, sphere of light and energy. And that is what was housing my consciousness. And therefore, uh, when I came back down into the body, um, the body had not been sewn closed. Uh, The lady was, the nurse was putting a tag on my big toe and she screamed and fainted. Fortunately, there was another nurse in the room and I was surgically closed, but I could tell them exactly what had been taken from me. And it was a plum shaped, ganglion growth that had about six ganglion tentacles coming out of it and if I had not had the surgery that particular day which I had had basically portrayed the symptoms of uh, oh uh, an burst appendix uh, basically I would have died in a few days anyway because the last and longest tentacle was very uh, only a small amount of millimeters away from my heart and would have strangled my heart so anyway Uh, I have had all kinds of supernatural paranormal events occur to me. I have been a guest at psychic fairs. I have put on uh, teaching sessions of the mystical Judaic system called the Kabbalah. Uh, I I have written numerous articles for all kinds of philosophical magazines, including those that center on the paranormal. I have been, uh, I am, of course, from California. And as most of you may know, uh, the Californians live very, very fast. So I went into business for myself at the age of 19 as a private investigator, and I had uh, federal, state, county, and city credentials, and I have been an advocate in regards to upholding the truth and presenting justice for all of those that were pushed down in the system or stepped upon by the system. I have also done spiritual counseling. I have been an ordained minister with Universal Life Church since the age of 19, and I have been an ordained bishop with the Holy See of the United States on behalf of the Egyptian Coptic Church of Egypt. I mean, excuse me, the Eastern Orthodox Coptic Church of Egypt, getting tongue-tied here a bit. But anyway, I am an established an established author. I'm an established poet. Uh, I have all of the clear gifts, so I am clear omniscient. Uh, you know, uh, I see things, I hear things, I can interact with spirits, I uh, foresee the future as a psychic. Uh, I channel people. Uh, both those that have passed over and, of course, as I've indicated, higher beings of intellect and higher beings in other dimensions and so forth. And so overall, um, my life has been amazing because it seems like now I have already completed three chapters and I now begin the fresh slate of chapter four. And so graciously, uh, I am honored to know TJ and uh, we have now become Pastor Teresa and Pastor Rich since we just recently founded the Ascension Church of Ohana this past Sunday. And so we threw the doors open wide and 
and in lots of different dimensions that no other church has ever embraced in the past. So anyway, that's an amazing thing in and of itself. And of course, if you're interested in becoming a member of our ACO club, then of course you can join us on Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com, where you can find memberships to participate in all kinds of different things. And it's very, very financially affordable. It's only $2 a month. And it goes up from there, depending on, you know, whether you be an artist, whether you be an author, whether you be a metaphysician, whether you be a scientist or any particular walk of life. We embrace all persons of all trades and all skills. And we are a scientifically, educationally based foundation and association of individuals. So that's where I'm coming from. Um, I'm kind of a renaissance man, more or less. Um, I'm highly skilled in a lot of different areas, including law enforcement, uh, including military law, including uh, OSHA law, including OSHA inspections, uh, all kinds of different determinants in regards to different paths and traditions of the martial arts, of which I have devoted 30 years of my life to the study and apprenticeship and uh, ascension to black belt in four, four different venues and uh, as a, as in, as far as uh, open mindedness, um, I have been this in you know I have I've done service for all kinds of different people all the way from the very top top echelon all the way down to those who are absolutely homeless. It just uh, you know depends as spirit moves, yes they say, or as according to all by the will of God, as, you know as I like to look at it. Anyway, I am also a Reiki Grandmaster. I do heal in five different techniques of Reiki, which includes Angelic Reiki, uh, Usai Reiki, which is Chinese-based, Tibetan Reiki, of course, which is Tibetan-based, and then also, in addition to that, uh, Reiki's with, Reiki with the Grandmasters and the Ascended Masters, and then basically something that I have yet to put a label on other than the fact to say that it's kind of a gift that's granted by the Holy Spirit and the Divine consciousness of God where basically a person becomes instantaneously healed. So, uh, I think that pretty much gives a good rundown of who I am and where I'm coming from. Back to you, TJ. Okay. Now, was I supposed to call Marcy or is she going to call in so she can participate? Marcy, Marcy is of the perception, okay, that she's allowing us to introduce the show, introduce ourselves, introduce the topic of the day and so forth. And so I basically suggested that she call in approximately half past the hour so that she would not interrupt uh, our introduction and, and where the theme of the day is and all that we're intending to cover uh, topic-wise and so forth. All right. So uh, Awakening of the Ascension and Ascension Age Movement is what we're hopefully going to be about in 2021. And just to discuss some basic news which we'll do weekly on the beginning show, which is Wednesday. And I really wasn't uh, aware I was going to be doing uh, Wednesdays again. I thought it was just going to be Richard and I on Sundays, and it's grown. And uh, we were going to have Susan Wyman on Thursdays in our UFO business with Jan Aldrich and others on uh, Friday with Center for UFO Studies, which J. Allen Hynek started, and I met him on a plane. So uh, I'm very curious to see what develops uh, in 2021 with others in the American Communications Online, a holding company like Richard said on Patreon. But we figured out a way to help people join so they don't all have to pay larger sums for various software because we're going into, which I just learned today, uh, after a rough day yesterday, uh, traveling, helping others, and I apologize to all of you uh, radio host, co-host, clergy, or metaphysicians that were going to join me yesterday, and I will send out an official email because uh, I got stranded with other people and left my cell phones at home, and it was like being in another world or going back in time. I'm sure some of you folks that are uh, baby boomers and of the Blu-ray can remember being without phones. It's, it's quite interesting, and in the day, we had at least phones on the corners you could go to, but believe it or not, when I was a child, I could remember phone numbers, but I've noticed that now that I use a cell phone, I don't know how many of you are out there, but I don't use the uh, memory codes we learned in schools uh, to uh, maintain numbers, so 
Uh, the news of the week is, wow, we are in change. Uh, we're going to program ourselves differently. Our memories will get re-recorded differently. So hold on to some of those meanings with artists, uh, visual, and uh, those beings that are now going to share more audio video on YouTube, which we are too. I'm making uh, new videos. I hope you'll check them out on TJ Mars CT Radio or TJ Mars Agency or Ascension Psychic Network, our Psychic Channel Network. We have a lot of them. But due to them going up, uh, they call it a type of uh, charging us more taxes or inflation. But uh, they, I talked to some people, and if it affects my human form as a carbon-based on 3D dimension, I know it probably affects yours if you can hear me. Now, I know we hear we work universally, but uh, I don't want to throw any of you, but we're going to start talking to you that you are ascension age awakened. So we hope that you will understand more dimensions and that we are multidimensionals. And for those in science, especially quantum physics, Get ready because we're not going to only discuss radio waves and airwaves, but bandwidth, which uh, Dr. Richard Allen Miller, Ph.D., and a GS-18 with the government. He still has a contract with them, but he's going to be our senior uh, member, director with our groups and has been with me for many years. And we're looking forward to writing books with him and his publishing company, Oak Publishing, and we're going to be his junior. I have Timely Manor Books imprint. But all of these people out there that have been working with me all these years in social media are accustomed to having free social media. So the news is that there's a little bit of controversy going on between some people at the higher levels and uh uh, Facebook and uh, I'll just say some other companies <laughs> and how they're going to do social media in the future because these social media that we do on free depend on ads and advertising dollars. So just so you know, we're going through after we saw the uh, pandemic hurt us in 2020 and we're going to say hindsight is 2020. And we're going to look in our rearview mirror just a little bit before we start uh, having a good table uh, discussion with Richard and Marcy is the fact that with this growth, a lot of us are feeling it after the pandemic, especially the metaphysicians and the empaths. So we're feeling it intuitively. And uh, as I experienced in 3D yesterday, personally, folks, many of us have been inside roughly a year, especially your baby boomers. So uh, we're not getting a lot of exercise like we used to, a lot of vitamin D outside. So uh, I really noticed a difference in my muscles. And uh, so we're going to discuss as metaphysicians how we can help our entire planet, including what I've been asked to uh, bring out for the planet with my extraterrestrial connections is the 1.5C to stay alive World Health Foundation or organization. I'm not even sure because I've never really visited it to uh, educate myself. But we have a lot of people that are listening to us now because they know we're returning. So I expect our numbers to start going up and are listening. And we are on uh, iHeart, Stitcher, Spotify, and all those other places uh, for years. So the main brand, if you're looking to come on and, or to hear yourself on psychic readings, I do understand people like us as a talk show. So thank you so much uh, for listening. And I'm so glad to bring you some new talent, new skills. And Richard tonight introduced himself. And last Wednesday, he informed me that we had a show and uh, we're going to bring on new people that he personally knows and has uh, worked with him in radio shows before. So today we were hoping to introduce Marcy Kosich because Richard has started with me. Now, Richard, did you start before 2020 or uh, with me? Did we just, that show we did with Suzanne and Janet, was that in 2020? I don't remember. 
Yeah, I believe uh, somewhere mid-range in 2020, either spring or, or uh, I'm thinking it might have been before the pandemic hit. That's what I'm thinking, but I can't swear. It was either pandemic, uh, prior pandemic or after like the second phase, which would have put it into the fall of 2020. Well, folks, uh, believe it or not, it's like looking back in chapters of our lives. And uh, I've been asked to help. Uh, We all have a mission. Some may remember their missions on Earth. Some may not. So we don't know how all this is going to pan out. But I have been writing books about Ascension Age 2012 and beyond. I wrote Knowing Cosmology, but I've never really attempted to sell my books. So people are going wow, I didn't know you wrote books. I didn't know you published a book now that I'm here in 3D. And uh, there's a reason for all of that. So this is going to be fun. We have Ace Folk Life Society. We actually have a society like the Royal Society. Ours is Ace Folk Life Society. And I've had people come on last year helping me during the pandemic, uh, which was Susan... Wyman Flynn and her husband, artist Richard Flynn, Richie Flynn, and Uncle Jack Rutherford, Spain and Mexico and the United States. Now, Jack moved back over here, and we're going to try to get them back on, and they were going to try to do uh, Thursdays or Saturdays, so we may have to uh, see what night we can get them back, because I know a lot of you really enjoy their art in California And uh, we have a lot of people that are tuning in from California, and I talked to today some in Phoenix, Arizona, and Scottsdale that work with us, and Consumer Cellular, and also uh, GoDaddy. And Richard and I are going to work as content providers, radio show hosts, helping fill iHeart, Stitcher, Spreaker, all those platforms. Some are paid, some are not paid. But what we need you to understand is we're building a group, a clan, uh, just to be spiritually uh, awakened with spiritual science topics, metaphysical topics, and Ascension Age awakening topics. Now, I understand Marcy included the word Ascension, so she'll be able to address what that means to her and uh, Richard and me, and we're going to have to learn how to all of us think together to form uh, content for radio shows around the world. And I noticed we have a large group in China uh, following us and a large group in Australia and UK, of course, in the Emirates. And so thank you, everybody out there, for been listening all these years. Now, Richard, our most famous shows out of all of them that I've done since 2012 – this, because we started with 2012 as our first season, I believe today we're starting our 10th season. I don't know on Spreaker. I'll have to, I have to number them like Survivor. So, Richard, real quick, let me just handle our Survivor friends that work with me in television. Our Survivor fan clubs are coming back in May, and they're filming this year in 2021. But we won't be bringing back television Survivor till September, but we're going to air 41 and 42, just so you know. Now, uh, all of y'all out there with ABC Go, where I was with ABC Television, we're going to start doing uh, The Bachelorette really soon. So we're ending The Bachelor uh, this time. But you know because of we were having to do COVID-19 tests and putting people in uh, – uh, well, holding them back a few days before they could get in television shows. We don't have to do this in radio, so Richard asked me to continue radio. So I'm sure that makes a lot of you in blog talk land know that, you know, uh, we we may not have to do all the audio on YouTubes. Now, a lot of our friends in Ascension are going to uh, bit shoot now (laughs) using Telegram. And so there's a lot of talk weekly we'll help you with in open source intelligence. So basically, uh, we're about global awareness. We're about communications. We have the company, holding company for everybody that wants to join American Communications Online. 
And then we're going to find the talent just like on uh, the uh, Amazing Race and uh, other shows out there. And Richard's going to help me keep up with various television shows and Rotten Tomatoes because he does catch some of the shows. But we all can't see all that we like to discuss that will handle metaphysics. Now, Richard, is there any television show that you can think of that would lean towards metaphysics on Wednesdays? We discussed Supernatural, I think, last week. Any more television shows that uh, are new for 2021? I'll have to ask you. Anything? Oh, you you told me about one, that Discovery of Witches. That would be discussed on Wednesday or Saturday, maybe. I don't know. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's a it's a porcupine view of witches and witchcraft and their capabilities, and of course, there's a bit of uh, special effects in there. But the interesting thing is, it's very real to life. Unfortunately, after doing some research, they only did two seasons, and uh, it was produced on the BBC, and then it was lent or bought over, purchased by. Uh, I think the travel sure on that one, or it might have well been American movie classics. Anyway, one one of those two TV TV broadcasters actually purchased the series, and they're kind of like uh, teasing people because they they played about three episodes, and now they're they're holding off for a month or two, and they're going to probably show another three episodes because I think there's only maybe a dozen episodes in total, but. Uh, that's a very interesting series in the fact being that, you know, when it comes to the metaphysical, well, meta meaning, you know, uh, it, it can be combined to mean metaphor. It can be, it can be combined to mean a lot of different words, uh, such as metabolism, where basically one is keeping a tab more or less, uh, in a, in a very general way on the heartbeat of all that basically strength, uh, strides outside of everyday life. And would basically be classified as, you know, extra, extra normal, uh, paranormal, uh, supernatural, all kinds of different aspects. And they all fall within the, the major, major heading of metaphysics. Uh, the metaphysical movement, I'm sure, uh, as Ma- as TJ had, or rather Teresa had said, you know, that uh, she and I are baby boomers. So therefore, we have seen metaphysics change languages about three times. And the languages have changed, but the train of thought and the intent or the uh, communicated expression has all remained the same. It has grown a little bit here and there, uh, such as the area of channeling. There are more new channels coming on board now uh, in a lot of different circles, such as Chiron and, of course, the Galactic Federation of Lights and other beings of this nature. And then then in a turn... Of events that way, there's also more mediums, uh, and mediums have actually gone on television, such as uh, the medium of uh, Manhattan, I think it is, anyway, where she just walks, you know, she just lives her everyday life, and she just approaches people out of the blue and starts talking to them from a psychic perspective and tells them about how many relatives they've got around them and how many relatives want to speak to them and everything else, and sometimes in, in entirely different settings rather than the norm where you would, you know, set up an appointment and possibly go to their house or they would come to your house and do a private setting. She's actually out there doing all kinds of of, uh, mediumship work in the general public, as well as under a forum or guise where you're actually, you know, hold that she holds a conference room and then in turn an audience of a couple hundred come in and therefore she goes through and picks different people and saying, you know, that she's hearing the voice of so-and-so and and that they're, uh, reminiscing or, or informing her of about specific events with a particular person's name that usually is spot on with at least one, if not sometimes several audience members all at the same time having similar relatives of the same name. And okay. I mean, I'm not, go ahead. Marcy showed up on, uh, on the hour 30 minutes. She's done radio too with you, but I'm going to let you tell people a little bit about Marcy before I bring her on, because I understand you know her. So uh, okay. this is impromptu, folks. He didn't know he was going to have to do this, but I'm uh, really briefing him on this as you hear it. But, you know, he's hoping to train as a co-host uh, with all of our groups. So 
He's actually stepped up to be the honorary president of all our stations, ACIR, ACO, TJ Mars, ET Radio, and TJ Mars Radio. Because when I work, I've been working pretty much with other co-hosts for eight or nine years, but I really need help. So I'm asking him to help me in radio land. So he is out recruiting, which was, uh, most of y'all know Mr. Thomas Anthony Sinise's job in the past. So welcome your guest. Should uh, you introduce her first, and I'll bring her on for you. All right. Well, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Marcy Kosic, and uh, she's a very gifted paranormal lady who I've know, had the pleasure of knowing for about four years. She does what I would classify Reiki toning. In other words, this is where she does tones through her 3D physical human voice, and these tones are of such a wonderful energy that they bring about physical changes in the people that are actually um, – in, in synchronicity with her to actually listen to the tones. Uh, they bring about physical changes, mental changes, emotional changes, and help that person uh, un, you know, unblock and unstop energies that may have been held up in their energy fields, whether it be through their chakras or whether it be through their aura, and even unleash past life histories and, and all things of this nature. And Marcy's been doing this now for quite a while. She is a published author. She is, uh, I believe she's published at least three or four books, and she has been on Blog Talk Radio previously um, and in different forums. Uh, so she is fairly well-known, but, of course, like the rest of us, you know, the, the more audience and larger the audience you reach, the better it is for everybody. And so, um, you know, like the rest of us, she's had uh, a life that was filled with ups and downs, uh, family situations and, and that kind of nature, you know. And I feel that she's probably been awakened now fully for probably at least uh, a couple of years or longer. Um, and she can tell you more explicitly herself. So it's my great pleasure to welcome now Marcy Kosick. Okay. Now, I see two lines. I believe she's called in on her phone and Skype, but let me see this one that says Marcy. Uh, Marcy, can you hear me? I, I'm going to want – uh-oh, she dropped. All right, well, let me check the phone then. Uh, Marcy, did you hang up on Marcy, or can you hear me now on your phone? Hello? Um, Hello, who's this? Um. She dropped on Skype. It said M A R C I, and then uh, I hit. When I hit it, it cut her off. So maybe she'll go back. Her phone's listed here, and uh, well, she I was, yeah, she was given in the dial num the dial in number, and that's the way she should be contacting us by dial in. I'm not sure who you just reached. I didn't recognize that Marcy. lady's voice. No, that didn't said- that didn't sound like her. Did you hear somebody? I didn't hear anybody. Yes, I heard I heard a lady's voice, and it was very deep in tone, and I knew for a fact that that was not resonate with, resonating with the Marcy I know. Interesting. Well, I saw Marcy. All right. Well, uh, Marcy, the call-in is 347-945-7207. Uh, could this possibly be uh, someone from California? Is this Suzanne or Johanna, possibly? Hello. 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 Would you kindly tell us your name? Hello. I guess they're just listening. Okay. Well, uh, we had a Marcy and a does seven seven five three hundred sound familiar? Uh, yeah. For Marcy. Seven seven five prefix. Yes. Okay. Now it says Marcy. I think both of them were Marcy. Now let me try this one. That could be. Marcy, is that you on Skype, possibly? It says M-A-R-C-I. Apparently, we can't hear her. Do you have your sound muted on your Skype, Marcy? Because I can see you, and I keep, I've keep i turned you on by Skype and by phone. So your Marcy on Skype dropped and went to your phone, and we couldn't hear you. So she may have her phone muted. Or she may not be. She may. Uh, this is I'm silly. Not, Hang on a second. Well, 
You want to? I'm going to reach out. I'm going to reach out and call her and find out what's going on. I mean, well, that's the only logical thing on. to do. Oh, Can you guys Marcy. hear me? There now she I is, can. Richard. I, yes, I hear you fine now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. I, okay, good. So I'm trying to both the computer and I'm going to get a good head, set of headsets for the the Skype, but I'm on headset on my phone right now. You know, well, keep it on the phone, care. please. I am. I, I tried the other way and it didn't work, so I had to do trial and error. But I did hear Richard talk about and introduce me. Um, and I've been on several radio shows. One of the things I do with the sound Reiki is um, I did it when I was 25 and I worked on Arenum and I started from doing the sound Reiki from there. And people were starting to feel more relaxed. They were starting to get addicted to it. And that's how I've been doing energy work because I was told when I was 21 that I do psychokinesis, which is moving and clearing energy. So with my clairvoyance, clairaudience, and clairsenience, and along with my tones, I'm able to um, transmute lower carbon energy of shame, fear, guilt, like kind of like oil compared to we have light energy underneath of water. And then so when I do it, as I've worked on Richard for the last four or five years, and Richard and I have a good exchange, um, we will see past lives coming out. It will hit the tones where your eighth level of your DNA healing, from what Chiron says, will start heal. your body will start healing itself. So it will be past lives. It will be inner child. It will be different images that will come in and the energy will transmute to allow more light to come in. And just Hello? to share further, this is further clarification, of course, Marcy also channels because a lot of the times her tones that are being broadcast through her physical 3D self are often being passed through her through ascended masters like Quan Yin or the Council of Nine or the Pleiadians or the Syrians or uh, the golden light beings that are, that's all I know to call them because they're very uh, tall light beings of gold. Well, welcome. Richard welcome. would always verify the, the people, like this person, this entity, these people. So Richard and I have massive Skype communications. And what I was told when one of my clients, when I worked on Uranium, started channeling named Annie. They they came into Elohim came through. I had never heard of Elohim. They're like, we like what you do, and so through the year and a half before Annie kind of flip switched on me, I learned a tremendous amount. I said, what do my tones do? And they said the tones do it well. We can work on people's akashic records. Well, welcome. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Well, yes, thank I hear you. you. Everyone, this is Marcy, and this is Hello. wonderful. I got I got to meet her briefly on a telephone. There's some kind of loud sound. I don't know if you're moving. Is it? Yeah, it's coming from you. No. I, I, I muted. It, it's not coming from me, but now it's quiet. Okay, I turned muted Richard and then came back on. But when uh, sometimes it picks up if you move, if you're interesting. Okay, so uh, folks, we hope we have a really good communication. We've had a little trouble getting into blog talk or showing busy. But we, we think we've got – oh, Marcy, it's your uh, wire on your headset. Can you talk to your phone without the headset? Uh, yeah. Would you try I that, thought- please? Okay, is this better? Much better. Thank you. Yeah, a okay, lot of people you, you, A lot of people yeah, are convinced just, they need headsets and they don't with blog talk. So you sound well, normal. Thank you. It was your good. headset. What happens folks yeah. is is when you use headsets, the wires in the copper get broken from moving the wire around and it scratches like you're taking an old okay. time uh, record and taking the needle and going across the vinyl, okay. and you'll be able to hear that on the uh, show. 
But thank you for joining us, Marcy. I would like to do a quick little interview with you because uh, Richard Richard, uh, has gone over the last show or so, and uh, I feel like I'm getting to know him. But I don't know you, so if you don't mind, tell me and my listeners, you know, we all have different groups, even though you've been on Blog Talk from time to time with others. Give us an idea of all my groups and social media and uh, listening around the world. Give us an idea of who you are, where you were born, and a little bit about your culture, if you're American, uh, basically how you grew up, high school, uh, you know, just a little bit of a little bit of a LinkedIn bio or a Facebook bio type things, if you don't well, mind. Well, yeah, and, and my books that I wrote about ten years ago explain I was brought up emotionally abused, and a lot of psychics were abused, and so we had to learn to be the hunter or the hunted. And so that's where we had to learn to sense danger or be aware. Um, I grew up in Piedmont, California. Um, my book is that they're on Amazon. It's called Velocity Wizards. The ones that I just recently did was called Acronym of Theta for Tarot, Healing, Energy, Tones, and Ascension. And, and I'm clairvoyant, I'm clairaudient, I'm clairsentient. I've been, um, uh, I was up in 1989, I went up to um, Spokane, Washington. Suzanne did a bunch of channel drawings with me, and she did one of me of being Little Gray, uh, Little Gray Cloud, which my friend Shauna ended up doing also of Little Gray Cloud and of White Eagle. The automatic drawings that I got were the chief among 12 chiefs. So my friends and I, when we were growing up, around 17 or 18, we started dabbling in Ouija boards. I saw my first spirit in on the wall. So a friend of mine and I were, like, playing the Ouija. I don't do the Ouija boards. That was the only time because you never know who you're going to bring in. But it spelled out the name. And so from 18 on, after I moved out of my parents' house, because I was told I was stupid, I don't think, I'm a pig, my father had a passion for taking arguments with me. And so what my passion is is starting off and empowering people because where I start off with being guilty, shameful, all the other stuff to take back my power and to teach people to take back their power of people manipulating and selling you out, all that other stuff that's going on. So from it's hard to explain my life because it's pretty much a book. From 19 on, I went into doing an uh, pair work, and um, they were into metaphysics, and we went to a channel, and I said, what do I do? And they, through the channel, they said, you do psychokinesis. I said, what's that? And they said, moving and clearing energy. And then somebody, when I was 25, did tones on me, and then when I worked on Arenum about eight years ago, which is an international Skype psychic company, I started doing tones. I'm, I just wanted to dabble in it. They could see me. I couldn't see them. It was all tech. People were starting to, I feel better. I feel lighter. I feel this. I feel that. So for the last 10 years, I have been incorporating all of my abilities and meeting people like Richard and, and doing several radio shows and just building a support group and had to eliminate a lot of my friends, a lot of them that were in the book, as to they either sold me out or they said they were spiritual, but they had their level of spirituality, and I just had to move on. Now, who is Susan? <laughs> it's been quite you a evoked, journey. You evoked the name what? Susan. You evoked the name Susan. So who is Susan? Because we know quite a few in our radio shows. Well, no, Su- Suzanne's in Spokane, Washington. I did a bunch of healings up there. And I met her, and I... And she did a lot of automatic drawings. There's one painting that she did of me. Uh, she's done past lives. So it's somebody from, you know, about 40 years ago, 30 years ago that that I knew. And I've met so many different people like Richard and you and very much guided because every time I think I'm going right, they send me left or vice versa. So now who is through they? all when this? Who is they? Uh, the masters. Okay, so remember, 
Remember, we're just getting to know you. So uh, know, we talk know, during 3D on the first show when we bring somebody on into our group. You know, we talk very physical 3D, and then we get into yeah. our higher selves. <laughs> but you're that's fine because you're being you. You're being Marcy because you're accustomed to doing radio. So, folks, she's accustomed to doing shows like this, but I'm uh, having her start like uh, – baby steps for all of our listeners right. that are in invisible college or metaphysics 101 <laughs> so uh when right. she evoked they she meant who her higher self uh evokes so explain that what you just said ascended masters if you don't mind okay so one of the things this this is just an example i do tarot and i started dabbling in tarot when i was 18 and that's why everybody said, how did you start? And there's so many different avenues that I've had in my life. So I'm trying to keep it simple. Um, so when one of my clients, Annie, came on, it was just we were going to some wine and just have some fun. Well, this entity, I was thinking about starting an international group because, um, and where it's a support system because I hate very fake psychics. I hate egotistical psychics, and so I wanted to start a group, and which is, you know, a good metaphor for that, as to people that are support system that are friends that are real that are aware. So I was starting this group, and Elohim, I didn't never heard of Elohim at that point, came full on trans channeling into Annie, and they're like, we like what you do, and for a year and a half. They would come in through her. She was was 28 years old and a mother of four kids, and and I learned a lot. So at that point, um, around 2003, something like that, then um, I said, I will work with you. They like what you do. So she would count how many spirits were in the room, and she goes, oh, they're delegating who's going to talk. That's what's been happening now in the last 17 years. Um, no, about, sorry, 10 years. And Richard would know, and Richard and I met, and he would see these many, many different entities in my room, and we would feel many, many different things. As I found out, as I've done tones, it releases the lower vibes or frequencies, and then we get higher and higher frequencies, which we get higher and higher guides like school. So as I've cleared out many people, including Richard, and many other people, they've been able to be in contact with um, the people that I'm working on. Okay, so let's unpack that a little bit, folks, because you're, this, <laughs> is a really, <laughs> this is a little bit of uh, new wave, uh, a little bit of old woo-woo, a little bit old new age talk, and then the Ascension Masters, which I am one, is richer than Marcy, when we evoke those higher callings for ourselves in the past, in our past lives, and especially in our training on the planet, we speak 3D now, etymology, and to many people that aren't familiar with interdimensionals or into right. those of life after life, are those out of body experiences or near death experiences. So, we may want to evoke ghost with Patrick Swayze for this first show with Marcy and uh, Richard, because even me listening knows that uh, a lot of people out there are very familiar with what they're talking about, and others aren't. So what we're doing is right. we're going to treat, we're going to do our listening audience. If you'll bear with us that everybody out there isn't a metaphysician, although we'd like to think they were. (laughs) And uh, Marcy is uh, actually uh, at one of the levels of, uh, she's been, what I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, Marcy, you've been doing this, did I hear, since you were 18, you were uh, initiated into the uh, sacred mystery school? Or when? how would you say that? Well, the way that, okay, this is another example, because this has been step by step. That's why I wrote my book. It's been my whole spiritual journey on my Theta book. From when I was born, and my father, my first psychic reading wanted a boy, but he was angry that I was a girl. So he had passion for anger and arguments with me. 
So it started off in that journey. The ghost first spirit I saw was when I was like 18. My great aunt died. I was with a friend of mine in San Francisco, and I would go to the bathroom after she died, and I go, "This is your aunt Nita." So it's been this whole process journey of different entities communicating with me, and as you get more and more as a clear channel and get rid of that heavy carbon energy, then they're able to communicate with you more. They are around us, and what I've been trying to teach people, it's a muscle. It's like, and this is why I started the support group, like uh, my friend Ruben and Shauna, who Richard just met, we're all supporting each other. Richard's supporting us. We're supporting each other, and we're, we're verifying that, no, this is not our imagination. So it's, it's a matter of just people think that they're going crazy because they see, feel, and hear things that they're not sure if it's real. There's many, many dimensions and many, many different energies that are going on. So I've been doing this journey and helping and healing. This is what I'm meant to do to help open people up or awaken them, if you want to call it, that type of thing. Very good. Okay. So uh, did you have any schooling as far as academia or education in public schools? Are any after for certifications or uh, maybe yes. a massage, CNA, uh, PA, you know, any, uh, uh, no, anything like that? that. It's, no, no, it's okay. just kind of like um, I started dabbling in tarot. Somebody did a tarot reading. I was brought up Yugoslavia, and they did it, you know, on a Christmas. And I kind of took off from there and found out I did tarot reading in other lifetimes. So to me, the tarot was very easy to do. So it's like these these dabbling when I was like 19, 20, 21, and then starting to hear voices, and it just got deeper and deeper. And then I took off up to the Rainbow Gathering where I thought that it was going to be a spur of the moment with these two gypsies from Florida around 83. Well, I ended up having five deja vus. Then then after that, then I went back home to the Bay Area where I lived with a friend of mine, and we both decided to move out. And I looked for doing au pair work in, in Marin. So I did the au pair work, or I went into the interview, and my friend took off. Her boyfriend came, and so the mother interviewed me. She had four kids. I thought it was only going to be for one. It was a three-story house. So I had a dream or deja vu of a white white room, white walls, white carpet. It turned out to be the first level of this three-story house where I did the au pair work, and in which I got introduced to the channeling that says I do psychokinesis. So it's been very much guided through this whole process of, of what's been going on. And then through there, I've learned the clairaudience, the clairvoyant, the clairsinience, and just enhanced it. I did hospice and I did home health and I had a CNA certificate. So like I would feel the person dying or I would see spirits in houses. Um, I ended up depossessing houses. I ended up depossessing people. And just through all this journey, through all these years, just got into these situations. Thank you. Now, so, Mom, um, so you know, let me do a, a little quick uh segue here marcy richard and marcy oh, are, are a huge help because this has been a very hard mission on earth to educate everyone that has wanted to see what the ancient mystery schools entailed and one of my jobs in this reality after my past lives near lives out of body experiences uh, bodhisattva, whatever you want to say, Ascension Age Awakening classes was I was teaching in Hawaii many years ago in the 80s, and I opened up the ancient mystery schools to a lot of the initiates. But, uh, you know, people were calling me saying, do you know what you're doing? And I'm like, well, I hope so. And then I got Michael Jackson to come over as a human form 3D, and we worked with him in 93 and 94, I believe, and other famous people and a lot of movie stars. So a lot of people know what's going on at the various levels and can teach us. So we all recognize all of you listening out there as students and teachers and learners and educators and 
light workers and truth seekers. And the Ascension Age was all about us coming together with the Yugas and all the world religions. So we have books out there if you want to see how all the world religions came together on the planet. And a lot of them that went off planet are either are defunct or no longer in existence. So please know that we honor all all religions and, and the metaphysicians, you'll have to look up the word metaphysics, which we did, I think, last week with Richard Ascension uh, and the Ascension Age Awakening. But we will be helping everybody learn to speak because so many people are segregated and we're trying to, we're not trying, we are doing this. We are actually bringing everybody, but now we listen to each person as to how they identify. So uh, I'm going to bring up and evoke this BIPOC, which is B-I-P-O-C, and the Koreans, uh, and I've read a lot of journals out there and a lot of posts yesterday on, uh, it's, uh, let me see if I can remember, it's an acronym for Black, indigenous people of color especially after uh the floyd incidents on the planet in minnesota george floyd and then we've had this uh other thing in in the word that we we don't do politics folks but we do know that in the spiritual we're under spirituality today not paranormal now uh some days, and we'll put this in paranormal to compete with a lot of other of our stations out there that handle talk show live. But we are building paranormal and spirituality, and we'll figure out all this for all the main stations, Spotify, iHeart, Spreaker, Stitcher, and all that. And I'll get the feedback and the numbers. And we are going into statistics and data collection. So people like Marcy and Richard have been helping in the realms of depending on what you guys can let us know we'd love to have your feedback on uh, metaphysics and esoterics and all the ancient mystery schools that a lot of people know they're handling them on youtube but marcy uh let's see how can we have oh goodness uh let's see how we can have you and richard We've got uh, we're not we've got a long time left. We've got one hour and eleven minutes left. <laughs> uh, uh, that's a long time. To me, that's normal. But, one of the things that Richard's always been good at gauging is like I would do my low tones, and we figured they're they're from somewhere else. My high tones, and so a friend of mine, Marben, would see gold energy coming out with the tones. Tones are binaural sounds or sound reiki have been around for thousands and thousands of years. There are temples all around the world where it's the 432 hertzes. Inside you go down steps and the stones, or there's one in India where they made a, a temple where each, each stone was a different sound. But what happened around 35 was Rockefeller started the pharmacy because when he went to court for the, the railroad, it split up. He did the same thing. So that, that's a lost art of healing sounds. I don't use instruments. I use my voice. And as I clear my own energies out like a 1,000 volts, it will blast out your 500-volt energy. Everything is frequency. Are you processing? <laughs> Yeah, we got you. I know. TJ, I, well, you're I know still you there. That's what I'm saying. I'm not hearing her. That's okay. She and might what? have uh, accidentally well, put herself on been... hold. Well, Richard and Richard and I know that we usually get Skype frozen. We get sounds frozen. We get energy. And one of the things Elohim said with me eight years ago was, your frequency is so high, technology can't handle it. And when I talk to them again, they pretty much told me to deal. So this is the normal where Richard and I, and Richard could tell you his experiences too, where we lose sound. We have to constantly restart the, the, the Skype, the phones, everything because of the vibrational energy that we're pertaining. 
and Richard and I were talking with me, TJ, and and Richard, we're going to blow circuits. Well, just so our viewing audience understands, the Elohim or the Elohim are basically, uh, that's a Latin Hebrew term indicating the sons of God. And basically, these are creatures that were created. uh, They were manifested as mankind to begin with, and they were uplifted in their consciousness, just as Christ was when he turned 33, to become basically fully awakened and God conscious. So when you refer to Elohim, you're talking about the sons of God, and they may or may not actually be physically incarnate, or they may well be physically incarnate and fully awakened as Marcy, myself, and TJ, and I'm sure millions of other listeners at this time. Okay, that's a good point. Now, Richard, as far as topics today, since we were just going to introduce ourselves just so people can get used to our responses, and we're going to zinc our energies together, uh, what topics should we introduce for the Ascension Age Awakening clergy metaphysicians. And she's evoked the Ascension Masters and mentioned some names. But once we talk about it, especially just working together, folks, as energies, dimensions, and bandwidths, even as interdimensionals, we're using radio waves. But should uh, we need to get our categories and down, like a syllabus, like people are going back to school but this is the metaphysical radio show. Oh my! Hold on. Oh wow. Yeah. I know. So Richard, go ahead and tell us your topics. Are you talking to me or Richard? Hello. <laughs> Did we lose her again? Or having minor glitches, it appears, for some odd reason, but then again, spirit knows. Anyway, it, it's normal. The and, topics... and, and I do feel them around me. I don't know if you guys want me to do tones or you want to do categories, mm. but not my head presently. is spinning. Oh, yeah, I, not know, presently, I know, I know. That's why I always ask. Yeah, I know. I, that's well, why I, mean, I always you ask. Know, we have to have the consensus of three in order to, you know, sponsor I know, and that. I'm just telling you not they are around. Not, yeah, I, I know. feel them. Well, anyway, getting on to the topics of metaphysics, metaphysics covers a wide, wide range of topics, okay? I mean, it basically, it covers channeling. It covers auric uh, seeing and auric exploration. It covers the, the, clair, the clair audience, clairsentience, which clair audience, of course, is the ability to hear spirits. Clairsentience is the ability to sense spirits. Uh, let's see here, the other five, the other three. Um Clear smelling, oh, clear hearing. Yeah, clear, um, well, I mean, clear there's clear thinking. names for them. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, there's oh, actually no, clear words for them. them. I know, I can't bring right. them up either, but anyway. Um, so you have the psychic gifts, psychic awareness, uh, psychic tools such as the Tarot, uh, mystery and ancient school information. Um, and this has been an ongoing movement now since at least the 60s, so you're talking a movement that's almost 70 years old. Okay? And so the movement stratification has not altered or changed, only the, the vocabulary has changed over time. So it seems like about every 20 years or so, maybe 30 years, the vocabulary changes because you have a new in-crop of human beings and the older ones are no longer discussing things as openly as they used to because they're nearing the completion of their paths of awareness and you have the younger generation coming forward, and they're on the bandwagon of all these different topics and all these different uh, explorations and things of that nature. And as a result, they tend to change the vocabulary. And so the vocabulary to date is now in its third manifestation. And so, you know, a lot of you out there are probably far younger than I. I could probably be your grandfather, but anyway, uh, the thing of it is, is that a lot of these things you're going to recognize, and fortunately, it's been preserved to a large degree through movies and television. Uh, there are lots of different series out there, such as Supernatural that was mentioned earlier. A Discovery of Witches is another good one. Uh, there are several other I've been watching other things. Quantum Leap. Yeah, the, the Quantum Leap. There's, there's all kinds of different series out there, some of which, which have been syndicated because they've been broadcast for a number of years now, uh, and then other ones that are just freshly 
coming out. Of course, uh, you know, you could go into the tra- travel channel. You'll find all kinds of paranormal investigations in regards to ghost hunting and that kind of thing. Uh, there's also, of course, channeling on there, mystics on there, uh, mediums on there. Um, the me- of course, there have been medium establishments as far as uh, what you'd call camps or specific locations. There's one in northern New York. There's another one called Casa Daga or the House of God, which is in uh, Florida. And there's uh, a, a few others spread around the country. And basically, I think what we're really, really trying to pour together is a synchronization of etymology, which is, of course, words or phrases. And then in turn, once we have the language completely clarified, we'll be able to intelligently discuss with you in regular terms that everyone will understand or can follow along with. And the drive behind uh, the awakening and ascension age is for everyone to come together, to recognize that we are all one family of mankind and that there should be no separation, bias, uh, injustice, or any of that kind of thing. Uh, because we are all equals. No one is any greater or any lesser than anyone else. And as a result of this, you know, um, that's where we're coming together, and that's why we now have kind of a symposium where we have developed and clarified that Wednesdays will be metaphysics, and then Thursdays will be mini readings, and then Fridays eventually we hope to gather, garner together basically our UFO groups and so forth all over the country and all over the world. And then on Saturdays, we're going to do the paranormal cruise and their investigations and what their hot topics are. And then Sundays are reserved purely for spirituality and also uh, sort of like the coming together church-wise since uh, TJ and I have just established the Ascension Church Ohana, which is currently located in Gulf Breeze, Florida, physically. However, it is a cyberspace church, and any and everyone is all welcome to join. So anyway... That's, Brett Luter that's where just we're at. Called, uh, Who? Brett, Brett Luter uh, from California. Okay. He's an author. Your... He's in our ACO club, our authors club, and one, he was the very first member of the ACO. And he just called me on the other phone and heard us talking. But he's in his car. But he said he'll call me later tonight. But he didn't want to interrupt the show. But he's listening from his phone in the car while he's driving home from work. So, folks, uh, we appreciate all of you that know that we are the ACO, and some of us uh, work metaphysically in tune with the acronym. It's not AOC, uh, the, la- the the initial for the uh, politician uh, woman, although I admire her for her strength, uh, Kasia, whatever they say. But now remember, as spiritual science metaphysicians, we will vote with our consumer voting power, but if you join our club and we get to know you, we vet you, of course, to get to know you, how you can best uh, assimilate into our group as ACO club, but we also have cyberspace culture, American Communications Online, and we have Alien Contact Org, and we also have UFO Secret Space on, on Fridays. But I believe uh, Brett doesn't know where he's going to fit in yet. So even though people have been there, they weren't ready for us after 2020 to start separating and unpacking all the various social media groups because we've all been in social media doing all this free posting and helping and volunteering to post all of it where they could all get the advertising. But now we're going to see with all the new federal controls that in communication, they want us to all be tracked individually from space and satellites. And a lot of us have been working in communications. And I used to run a lot of trucks cross country, coast to coast. And I had satellite communications from, uh, let's see, I was doing that type of work from 94 through 2004. So uh, I've been helping people learn how to communicate via Qualcomm and satellite communication since then. And before that, I was in the government. So it's going to be curious how we uh, separate days and only two hours a day 
when there's so many people podcasting, it's very, very popular right now. But what I learned today is it also depends on your equipment. Because I didn't know that, I mean, my internet is 5G, but just like I was talking to Marcy about a lot of people are old school thinking they have to have headsets. Right. So now the phones are so in tune with 5G, and I have Mediacom, which is 5G and really a strong bandwidth, but my Sony is only a 3G phone. So I've got two Motorola's, and they're saying that Android is easier to program. So a lot of the kids that only wanted privacy on the app, there's something going on between Apple president and Mark Zuckerberg, president of Facebook. Now, I understand the people that are buying land on the planet, but us metaphysicians have a responsibility to uh, hold the line together. So we want our own voting caucus to say we will vote with voting power. But back to you, Richard. I've got another call coming in. We're very active today. My goodness. Let me mute. <laughs> we know it would be. That's what Richard and I said. Um, yep. TJ, can I say a couple of things? Well, go ahead. She's bowed out for the moment. Well, what I just want to say is when I, I could do tarot readings. On the very simple and talk to people very simply on the very beginning to like the conversations like Richard and I have that are very, very advanced. It's a matter of gauging. And also it's like Chiron calls and permission slips. Permission slips are tarot readings. They're I Ching. They're all these different things where you're allowing your body to, to get permission to advance or read or whatever it is. And then you get to a point where, you don't need the cards. You're, it's a muscle. You're, it's a very natural. Like Richard and I talk about ghosts, spirits, astral projection, um, death. Uh, it's a very normal conversation for us. And when you get into it with it being a normal conversation, then you're, there's no fear involved. And it just gets more and more aware with, with what's going on. And just for all you scientists out there and, uh, mental people and so forth. The muscle that Mar- Marcy is referring to has been in the brain now ever since man was created with the brain, that is, and it has lied dormant in the majority of people. Um, however, when it is instigated electronically through electrical signals of the brain, it is a gland and muscle that falls between the pituitary and the perineum in the brain. And uh, uh, I know from experience because unfortunately, uh, this came fully awake and active when I was 18 years old. And when I was given a brain scan by a neurosurgeon, he diagnosed it as being a tumor and basically told me that I had six months to, to live. And, of course, I turned around and looked at the man and laughed in his face, which was not the greatest thing to do. But it was telling him that I didn't accept his information, that instead I refused his information. And I told him outright that I would call him in 10 years and tell him how I was doing. So you see, there are various parts and parcels of the brain that are chemically and electronically charged. As you raise frequency and vibration, you also activate various parts of the brain as well as various systematic drives within your DNA and other parts of the body. They all start coming online. And like Marcy was saying earlier, that once your frequency reaches a certain level, you in turn begin to actually heal yourself. And it then becomes kind of like a mind over matter thing because you say to yourself, well, you know, uh, I want to lose 40 pounds or I want to, I want to uh, gain more muscle strength or I want to be able to run a marathon or I want to go hiking or I want to go climb a mountain or I want to go surfboarding or I want to go paragliding or whatever it means happens to be that you have a fancy for that it gives you a thrill and a joy at the moment you are telling your body that it will adapt and change so that in turn you can undertake these various sports. I mean, I deeply admire all these people who get into these uh, crazy uh, competitions as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the Ironman, you know, when you're jumping from a bike to running to swimming in the water and back again, that's that's kind of way out there. But yet it, it's amazing that there are actually thousands of people that – 
getting back into uh, the mind culture and the eclectics of uh, the etymology that is of, of the standard wavelength of words, I mean, you have to understand that words themselves are frequency. They're harmonic tones that are being broadcast as we speak. So one has to become very intentionally centered because your words in and of themselves can also manifest things into physical matter. But of course, well, that, again, this takes time there, and practice. I think his name is Emoto, where he studied the whole water. And the water is sound is frequency. And so when the when you would have love, he would they he took photographs of the water being like a complete star, or if you have thought patterns, the negative ones would be just distorted. Everything is frequency, whether it's a thought pattern, a verbal, emotional, mental, psychological, and we could change it. And that's what I've done with my body and my mind and my soul, going from fear, fear, shame, guilt, anger, you know, these different things to get into alignment and energizing. And diseases are... 75% 75% is, is on the emotional and the mental where we have that lower carbon energy. When I do my toes, it releases it where the body can start healing itself like what we were talking before. That's why yeah, we have well, diseases. Let me tell you, what? when you uh, for radio, uh, people need to understand if you mention somebody, please, uh, you know, uh, when you're citing a source, Dr. Masuru Emoto's water experiments. They can yeah. look that up. So you guys go through. I couldn't stuff remember his first stuff. name. Oh, I'm t- I'm terrible about this, Marcy. Just letting you know. <laughs> but after this many years, I've learned from the people that email me or talk to me after we get off they the will show. They'll correct you. They'll correct me. So <laughs> that is. Uh, I am well aware of all that. Okay, good. So, uh, folks, we're just getting started, so please be patient. I had somebody call me a while ago with an angered tone. So please, folks, know that I'm doing the best I can to return. I know I upset a lot of you people, but, you know, I'm coming back. This is considered a pseudoscience. So <laughs> Now, we have integrative medicine for all you professionals out there. You know, I've worked with a lot of you in hospitals and a lot of you chiropractors, and yes, we are going to do, uh, you know, we're going to do a lot of different topics. That's why we're trying to uh, separate the days. And a lot of you are uh, wanting me to do uh, psychic readings today. I understand that, but you know, we do those free as many readings. To, uh, and I know it's a very entertaining show, but we would like to have a show on Wednesdays for more people that are clergy, our metaphysicians our practitioners so we can have them invited so you then can in turn decide if you want to try one of their practices or their beliefs or their rituals or follow them on uh, cyberspace just to see what they're interested in like you're doing me today so what happened is yes i do realize that uh Marcy has mentioned several things and several people, but we'll slow it down a little bit. So, uh, Richard, we're going to have to control the topics and all the things because we're going a little too fast for all the people that are accustomed to us doing readings. That's why, TJ, that's why I said I want to know, because it's the first time on the show, and I'm trying to keep it simple with all the knowledge and information (laughs) that I've had. Thank I'm you. really trying to, but it's like we go to one to another. But I said, like I've told Richard, it's just like, just tell me what you want me to talk about, what you not want to talk about, and I will try to stay on that that subject and that information as much as possible. But sometimes one thing leads to another, and so <laughs> it just kind of blows up. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about Masura Emoto because he's so important. Now, it's my understanding okay. he's no longer on the planet. So, folks, yeah, you know, he died about a year ago. I have his book. Emoto about molecular right. structure of water. So, uh, he was uh, uh, from Yokohama, Japan, and we've mentioned him many, many times on our radio stations, folks. But we have an idea that we're going to share a lot more information 
open source than we've done in the past. So this is my first time to work with Marcy, and uh, Richard, you know, has worked with us doing readings, and he's also helped uh, describe himself like an interview. But, yes, this we're actually uh, inventing sort of a panel get-to-know-Marcy discussion. So it's not really an interview, which I've been corrected on, and it's not really a conversation so much, but it's more conversation. So with Richard on vibrations, bandwidth, and yes, Richard will discuss vibrations versus bandwidth. So my goodness, folks, thank you. They're tuning in so fast. I'm trying to, I'm not running a board. So I'll, I, I've been told to turn the board on. So let me turn the board on. My goodness, we got popular fast. <laughs> I'm not used to, what did y'all do? Tell everybody we all were coming on or something? All right, folks, I opened the board and I will be here. So if you want to talk on the board, message me okay now i'm going to mute and richard you will co-host and break down when she is talking or you're talking you have to do metaphysics 101 and choose the topic so right now we're on uh metaphysics 101 masuru emoto if you'd like to discuss his hypothesis of the uh hidden message in the water or anything like that uh, folks, he was born in Yokohama. Uh, let me look him up real quick. Oh, Thank goodness. Do you, you have enough information? Yeah, sure. If you've got enough data. Did? Yes. Yes. I, I flashed on some. Okay. okay. The, thing with, the, the thing with the water, we'll try to stay with that subject, is when I was on a rainum, okay, I had water and I had salt. I had water in the living room, and my room was set up with crystals. And I had salt and water in my bedroom. I did my tones because the tones resonate well with water. I took a rebirth, and that's a whole other different subject. But um, the water and the salt ended up making a pattern with the waves. And what I've seen is the more higher frequency it is, then the more the salt makes a pattern with the water. I had moved the salt with the water in my room, and it made the pattern again. In the living room, nothing happened. So it's interesting how the geometrical forms, we won't go into sacred geometry, but how the forms of the water and the salt ended up creating patterns. Okay. Now, patterns, folks, I've seen them too on the wall. A lot of you may remember <laughs> some of my talk about uh, – oh, gosh. Uh, this is this is interesting to have two powerful – metaphysicians at the same time but we're gonna uh, we're, i think we're gonna have to set up our own monthly journal with topics but ultraviolet <laughs> light light with uh we're using it right now during the pandemic we'll clean a room and with certainly electromagnetic waves so we now have and ai and robots helping clean hospital rooms and they're pumping out as many of those uh five thousand at a time in one country, I think it's Japan, where this gentleman was born doing these uh, new robots to clean hospital rooms. They're trying to do that uh, as fast as they can as uh, in hospitals. But, folks, there's so much going on right now on the planet with all this vibration and growth with the pandemic. It's going to be uh, hard to keep everybody uh, aware of all the various words and pictures and music and in, inventions and all the new uh, world uh, uh, products and services. So we'll do the best we can, but I'll, I'm really uh, getting chill bumps based on the fact that I've got so much coming in on my computer and on my phone. So back to you, Richard. This is uh, – topics and how we can help in the pandemic with our uh it's it's still considered pseudoscience but we do have in uh let me just evoke this okay with the federal government and the government understands we're using inventive ideas and we're all learning with science and we have uh caters researchers research and development and we have uh, all of this medicine and this cutting edge, and some of it's still fringe. But we'll start with this gentleman because he had uh, his own company. He was president emeritus, which is sort of like honorary, 
of the International Water for Life Foundation, a nonprofit based in Oklahoma City. Okay, so I guess that's still there if you're interested. And in 1992, he became a doctor of alternative medicine at the Open International University for Alternative Medicine in India. So uh, we're using alternative medicine and the new word that has been evoked. Richard, do you remember what I said, integrative medicine? Yes, but we're getting we, way away from emoto. I mean, you know, you want well, us to simplify a, things with emoto. Hello? Well, that is, you know? that was his, I'm reading, that's his bio. I'm reading his bio. Well, you bio. didn't clarify that to the audience that that's who you were speaking of. Come on now. Okay, well, uh, I thought we were still on the suru emoto in the water. Well, we are. We are. All right. Uh, I mean, you know. I was reading. I said I was going to clarify that. So that was Yamamoto. It was Yama. Now I can't even say his name. Uh, He was born in Yokohama, Japan. His name Masuru. Masuru Emoto. So uh, Masuru Emoto. So his education was Yokohama Municipal University, and he was born July 22nd, 1943, for you astrologers, and he died October 17th, 2014, at 71. What did he die of? Does it say he renamed the vibrationometer? Vibrationometer became an operative himself and started business dealing in vibrations. There you go, Marcy. So back to you. He's not a quack, but they did say right. the No, he's mill- not. His, if you guys have his, his books, his photos are incredible. He has them in different languages. The photos, the star flakes, the, the, you guys should just get his book on water and healing because we have the four elements that are in us, the air, earth, water, and fire. So you wouldn't call him a quack, but on Wikipedia. Oh, no. No, no. I learned a lot from him because okay, I so understand sound. I understand water. I've, I've done healing immense amount. I've done rebirthing. Everything is to do with that, that fluid, that the washing. When I clear people out, a lot of times the energy will be stuck. It will transform into more liquid. So, well, no, he's not a quack, too. I'll let Richard address that. Richard, somebody in Wikipedia. Now, folks, Richard is very talented with education and words, uh, somewhat of a wordsmith. But, Richard, if you may want to help us online in Wikipedia and you, Marcy, and I will too, because a lot of these people, they put in here, in 1992, he became a doctor of alternative medicine at the Open International University for Alternative Medicine in India, a diploma mill which targets quacks to sell its degrees and was later shut down. So people, when metaphysics, we're going to work with you for certification with American Communications Online and our Psychic University and certify our practitioners, but we're using integrative medicine And we'll get a lot of these other words that we're sharing, but we're educational entertainment today under the discussion of metaphysics. So, Richard, you know, they call a lot of people, because it's cutting edge or fringe, are pseudoscience. And we're going to have these people, they call them haters in the politics on social media, but we're going to have those people that go out and debunk, just like they do UFOs and those people that research them. So we will have that in this water vibrations that Marcy is so good at. So uh, let's see. He actually went to Yokohama Municipal University and took international relations. Now we have in my UAP associate group, one of the founders is from Japan. And his name is, oh gosh, uh, these Japanese names. I love people from Japan. Uh, no, Norio, Yokohama, Yokohama. I'll have, let me look him up real quick. So, uh, but I'm going to, uh, we've got so much going on. Let me look up UAP. We'll just mention it on today. Uh, UAP Associates. Let me look up his name. He does Citizens Investigators, but Richard can help me. UAP Associates, E-Force Agency, 
Let's see. Where's his name? Uh, I'm so embarrassed, folks. Uh, do so many handles or hats, and we have so- – see, it's been social media, which has been great for the world getting to this. Where is his name? Oh, my gosh, these blogs. I do so many blogs. But let me mention, in case you guys want to join us, is, uh, well, where is he? I can't find people myself, and I'm an author and a writer. American, where is his name? Oh, let's see, UAP. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Alien Contact Association, UFO Secret Space. We'll just mention that today, but we'll try to get back to Fridays. But we're doing so much. Where is his name? It's uh, well, let me see if he's up here. Uh, I can't find his name. Let's see who's who's Authors Club, UAP Associates, Terms of Agreement. Let me see. All right. I don't know, Richard. I'm sorry. We'll have to discuss this Friday night because I can't find any of their names. So let's go back to. Uh, Yamamoto and Masani, Masuru Emoto. And Richard, tell us why people don't recognize all these places that certify metaphysics. Can you educate us? Well, yes. I mean, metaphysics is a pseudoscience. Um, However, there are now numerous universities, including Oxford, Harvard, uh, Purdue, uh, let's see, and I could probably search and find at least a dozen more now actually offering degrees on the bachelor's and master's level in actual metaphysics. So that just goes to show you that nowadays things have drastically changed because people are recognizing that the teachings from 50, 60, 100 years ago have actually come into play in our 3D reality. So uh, there's just two key points that I want to uh, mention about the science of water and vibration. And these are that one drastically affects the other. The original studies done by Mr. Emoto, uh, Emoto rather, uh, demonstrated that when he played music or he played sounds in a direct association and not a very far distance from a small body of water, uh, say being held in a container, that the water was drastically affected, that some tones would create waves, some tones would create swirls in the water, et cetera, et cetera. And the reason that this is so very important is because you have to consider human beings are made up of at least 70% water. So we are water vessels walking around on two legs. So therefore, if we ourselves are comprised of water, then in turn, vibrations, frequencies, and so forth are going to affect us directly and do affect us even in our everyday environment, whether it be the sounds of cars or the backfires or uh, jets going overhead or trains coming by or the ground shaking or, you know, loud music blaring at us from cars that we had no intention of listening to. Uh, Just all kinds of different things. We're constantly exposed to sounds of all kinds. We hear sounds in nature. We hear birds. We hear, you know, chipmunks. We hear all kinds of various animals. And then, of course, you know, even when you go into restaurants, again, you're exposed to the sounds within the restaurant. And then, of course, as in given individuals, when we recognize various words in our vocabulary that in turn affect our mood, It's because the way the word is being pronounced and the energy that the word is coming forth with from that given person's vocal cords to your hearing system. So vibrations and frequencies have been around us ever since mankind has been invented. The science of metaphysics goes all the way back to, to, you know, Greek and Greek philosophers. And, you know, so you're talking at least a good 12, 1500 years ago. And yes, it's been considered a pseudoscience, but hey. All right, yes. we'll use Masuru Emoto uh, in Japan as one of our honorary leaders of Wednesday's Metaphysics with Marcy and Richard and me for water vibrations and being uh, carbon-based units with, I don't know, 85 or 90% water for integrative medicine, a holistic approach to health. So remember the words integrative medicine, Marcy and Richard, because that's sort of where we fall under uh, oh, government. Okay, also, and then, 
let me let me really okay. quick mention heal your mind, okay. body, and spirit. And in civilian intelligence for Richard on the other nights is Norio Hayakawa. So I apologize, Norio. He's helping me with UAP versus U- the old nuts and bolts UFO people with Center for UFO Studies with J. Allen Hynek in the Blue Book, which uh, Marcy is going to study as well. So now we've got those two. Norio Hayakawa uh, for Richard. That might be the first time Richard has heard his name in my group. So Norio is a, a degree teacher. Uh, uh, actually, he teaches uh, how to speak uh, languages in today's reality. Norio, H-A-Y-A-K-A-W-A, and he used to sponsor events. He had one in Las Vegas for uh, UFO people, but he now has civilians intelligence, okay? so And he's in our UAP as a director with me. So now back to you, Marcy. I just wanted to clear all that up for everybody. No, I, know, because, I, I understand. Also, right. I have on my YouTube under Marcy Cossage or Cosmic Cosmos, I have a lot of tones I've done with water where I've been doing where you all of a sudden the wind will start changing. It'll start. And even Richard has picked up some of my tones when I've videotaped them. The energies, the doorways, all of a sudden the, the water will start coming. So I live near about an hour and a half away from Lake Tahoe, and I'm like a couple minutes away from the Truckee River, which is the water that comes down from Tahoe. So I go, I've go. i gone there for the last 10 years, and I've done my tones. And so you'll see that the different experiments or energies that I've done on tones and water and how it reflects onto that. Thank you for joining me in the chat room, everybody. Uh, Skater, uh, Starlight Angel, thank you so much. Uh, and I will start trying to keep this open. Area code 708, you're live in on the air with Richard Marcy. How can we help you from Chicago? Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Are yeah. you just listening? Okay. Yeah, just... uh, Chicago, can you hear us? Okay, maybe they're just listening. All right, I'm going to put you back on hold. All right, back to you, Marcy, Integrative Medicine, Body, Mind, Spirit. Yes, we still have events while I'm uh, sharing. Yes, you can enjoy the conversation, and, of course, you can join us. Uh, people are in in the uh, talk room wanting to know if they can join in the conversation. Well, today, uh, folks, you will maybe open the uh, chat room up, but uh, just type to me right now, and uh, – in the, in the future, I'm going to get better at doing this on YouTube and chat rooms, but let's just do radio today. So back to Marcy and Richard, and you guys, we got a whole 22 minutes left. So there's people listening, and they want to be a part of this. So you two are handling integrative medicine and uh, the Japanese instruction, water neuroscience uh, today, and metaphysics with Marcy, who does t- now, uh, she did one on me, and it worked, folks, just her voice. And I know uh, you may think I am biased, but I'm not. I'm giving a true testimony that I have never met this woman in person. She just offered to sh- uh, suggest that I would like to do this for you, and I gave her permission. We, do, As metaphysicians, never do anything without permission, okay? It's just a universal law among uh, shaman metaphysicians. We have to have permission. And she did one, and it broke. I, I, for a minute, I didn't think anything about it. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't breathe, and my dog got on me, and I was like, move, Coco. <laughs> you know, I was choking. So she helped clean out some phlegm, and I actually started feeling lighter. And then today, I feel a lot better. And uh, I'm just, that's my testimony. And she did not ask me for that, by the way, folks. She didn't say, oh, let me come on the show and give you a a testimony. So back to you, Richard, if you want to give her a testimony. But folks, this stuff is real, but people just don't talk about it because there's people out there that keep people from doing cutting edge integrative. And we can explain all the legal hassles of that on a later show, but I'm going to mute now, Richard, go back. To, uh, thank you for listening, everybody. I'm running the board and phone calls and the, the chat room, and I've never been so busy. Okay, you guys, good show. <laughs>
All right. So where do we branch off from here? Um, hmm. Well, of course, alternative medicine includes, or integrative medicine, uh, they basically both use the same terminology. One, of course, saying alternative, meaning an other means other than the regular accepted medicine, such as drugs and, uh, you know, various forms of uh, medical surgeries and all that, and medical treatments per se, that, of course, we deeply respect and, and enjoy the uh, assistance of all of our doctors out there. But at the same time, you know, an alternative means that, you know, you could use herbs, you could use uh, various uh, concoctures and tinctures and all kinds of this stuff. And basically, this is medicine that's been handed down by midwives and, of course, witches and other uh, shamans and, and what you'd call um, persons that were highly respected in their tribal cultures. And yet, of course, nowadays, uh, that ancient wisdom is actually being heavily sought after. Of course, then you get into the psychedelic field, and of course, there are uh, experiential uh, psychic and paranormal occurrences uh, when under the influence of perfectly natural substances, um, such as LSD. Uh, I should note here that LSD is actually chemically created in the brain in a very minute amount, so therefore, it, only a very minute amount needs to be ingested. And of course, one should always be in the presence of friends when tripping, as we used to call it back in the 70s and 80s. But anyway, um, so then we get down into other forms of healing, which in addition to uh, you know the tones and how they affect not only water, but how they it totally affect an entire person's state of being. Uh, I've personally had the pleasure and the honor of working with Mar uh, Marcy for about the last four or five years. And she has shared tones with me on numerous occasions. And they are channeled at times. Uh, and then at other times, it's like, uh, I guess you would have to say that her higher self produces them. Um, which, of course, when you're talking to a person's higher self, you're talking about the person's spirit um, or their core essence or intelligence of God that they resonate with as we all resonate since we all come from the one source. But anyway, uh, so as a personal testimony, I myself have had all kinds of clearings. Um, I've had release of back pains and shoulder pains and neck pains and all kinds of different frequency changes. Uh, and then of course, in turn, those in instances where there were actually beings such as ascended masters, which you have to add an ascended master is someone Oftentimes, who has lived many lives here on, on earth, a very fine example of one would be St. Germain. Okay? St. Germain uh, was here as an abbot, and he was also uh, declared a saint over time. Why? Because he could manifest transformation in the physical through the use of energy work. And in turn, they, he now is an ascended master and in control of the violet flame. Well, the violet flame is the flame of transformation and transmutation. And again, this is something that you as a conscious individual may embrace and give her mission to St. Germain to help you transform and transmute to become your core essence or your highest possible being, okay? And again, you know, uh, I myself personally, as a Reiki Grandmaster, I do in fact use energy work and I am capable of projecting energy long distances and calling forth energy into a person's life at a given moment and sometimes it's instantaneous. Uh, with the assistance of archangels and the Holy Spirit and other guides and ascended masters and so on and so forth. And other times it's what you would call perfected to the right time at the right moment when it's most ideal for that actual person to be relaxed and in a receptive state so that they mo may more commonly receive that healing instrument or that healing modality. Richard, Richard I'll yes. go like back to the water. Through the channel, they were saying the best time, because I'm constantly doing rebirthing where you turn the lights off and you go on the right side of the brain, but they were saying the best contact is when you're in water, or if you're stressed out, you run your hands under warm water, so that will help relieve that anxiety or that energy that's, that's in people. So again, it's, it's back to, you know, that vibration. Yes, and again, a fine example of that also, Marcy, is just sitting at the seashore 
and listening to the waves right. come crashing in on the on the sand because you will find after right. a very short short period of time that it actually relaxes you in total and you become in harmony the with the sounds around clear. you. Yes. Yeah, the negative ions in in the ocean clear out people's aura or they're drawn to water or they the water increases live energy compared to like pools which is more dead energy and so i've been told many times where you just go put your feet in the water or you let the water talk to you or you you clear it it just we get bombarded by so many different things and we've lost that energy of earthing which is where we put our feet on the ground people wear high heels We've lost that frequency of the four, what is it, 442 hertz of the earth um, yes. that, that are going on. And so yep. if people could do that, get back into nature, get back into the woods, get back into, like, my tones. Animals love my tones. And it's a frequency that they can resonate with. Yes. I also want to clarify one other term that I think is most appropriate in this particular angle and that is holistic medicine and holistic medicine has been around for a very very long time and the reason it's broken into the term holistic it means whole being okay and you know right. eastern medicine has already ad- always addressed not only the physical person but all the spirit also the spiritual person so if you break down the word disease into two counterparts it is dis-ease meaning that there is a problem or there is a, a, a malalignment or misalignment between your spiritual self and your physical self or conscious self. So therefore, because of this misalignment, if it's not addressed and corrected right away, it later on in life can actually manifest into physical diseases. Um, and, and of course, so that's why I call myself. About, and that's yeah, another so, term that I use myself the medic intuitive, which is also Richard is. We can where the energies are, where the blocks are, and help release that energy so that the body feels more at peace, which is what the healing is, and aligned. Okay, well, let's back up just a second here, Marcy, because we're getting kind of ahead of ourselves, okay? I'm, I'm when you start to keep talking, it When you start talking energy fields, of course, our listeners will kindly identify with the chakra system or the seven main chakras that are in the body or energy right. centers. And each of one of each one of these uh, radiates at a certain vibration, a certain frequency, in a certain direction, and they also have a color that's associated with them. And of course, this has been a Chinese uh, system of accepted medicine for a very, very long time, as well as uh, a number of other uh, Ayurvedic schools and a number of other uh, Vedic uh, scriptures and so on and so forth that teach all of these chakra systems in India and so forth. Um, and they're energy fields that reside in the body. So these energy fields, in a turn, actually produce what we call the aura or the electrical field that is generated directly around the body and can be projected out from the body as close in as maybe a few inches or as far out as five or 600 feet, depending on the mood that the person is in. So in other words, you see, your emotions also transcribe into frequency and also vibration. So therefore, when you're happy and, and you're really ecstatic and, and overjoyed about something, you're producing a vibration that is sending this joy out that is greeted by the auric fields of all of those around you. So if they happen to be having a down moment and your positive, joyful energy hits them, all of a sudden you're going to brighten their day without so much as even knowing them or even being directly necessarily in their same environment. So... um Yes, uh, the basic bottom line is everything is vibration and everything is frequency. And we have been knowing this for a very, very, very long time. And it has been hidden away as a science uh, called the magical arts. It has also been uh, hidden and taught in many mystery schools and so forth for a very long time. And this brings the, the conversation more or less full circle in a matter of speaking uh, in the regards to the fact that, you know, we are all... Uh, bioelectrical magnetic personalities that are harbored or housed within a physical being. Okay? And that's what we're dealing with in the 3D world. So naturally, if your chakras are out of alignment, if your chakras are blocked, 
if your auric field is misaligned uh, or any of these energetic distortions, which, which Marcy was just referring to, uh, then naturally these blockages and these clearings need to transpire so that in turn you will have a better sense of well-being and groundedness within your own self, both emotionally, well, mentally, I, I just, spiritually. Go ahead. In, in and in, I'm trying to keep this metaphysically, even though my brain is spinning. When we're in fear, our body contracts, which eventually, like we say, we're okay. It just You just suppress it. So that's where the layers happen. When we have love or energy of non-fear, which is it, our body expands. So, again, that's where the body, the chakras, the energy, the water, it's, it's like, you know, a, like a planting a seed and being underground and, and dying unless we nurture on mentally, physically, emotionally, psychologically. Our body needs to acknowledge all those levels to heal and acknowledge and release. Certainly. I know I'm, tr- I'm going off. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Well, again, you know, it's those that are listening are already tuned in. And a lot of them are, if they're not tuned in, a lot of times they listen to a conversation and they have a whole aha moments or moments of instant enlightenment right. or instant awareness or all of a sudden something connects within them and says, oh, that's that's what I've been thinking about and didn't have the words to connect the dots. It will resonate towards you. Whatever, whatever we're talking about, which resonates into you, that's something that your body is acknowledging. Truth, people know the truth as to, like, your body will start getting chills. It will start getting um, expansion. It will start getting dizzy. That's more oxygen or anaerobic going to your body. So it's just a matter of what you feel is right for you or listening to your intuition, which is what we're trying to get people to do, that muscle, acknowledging. True that. I know we only have a few minutes left. Well, of course, you see, an hour and eleven minutes is 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 nothing in comparison to conversation oh, I, I time. That's why I, I know. You know. That's why I love doing radio. You know, and, so, and teaching. So anyway, talking, I guess in I guess sort of on a closing theme, you could say that yes, we are all vibrations. We are all frequencies. We are all made of sound wave megahertz, and there are you know megahertz such as the uh, oh, don't run it. I can't think of the word now. But anyway, I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about because they've been around for a lot. Um, different frequencies and different hertz that you can listen to in headphones and so forth. And they will change your mood or they will change, you know, they will change your insides. They will change your spirit. They can, you know, change all kinds of different things about you and put you in a more harmonious state of being. And of course, this is what Marcy's doing with or tones, yes, musical notes as well. Uh, music, of course, is basically the anthem in regards to, you know, being stirred emotionally or even going back in time sometimes. The song will put you in a different place. Um, and, of course, they can make you feel happy or sad. And oftentimes the lyrics that basically uh, put you in those various pace, spaces. And, I mean, you know, uh, and, and- there's... And also, Go ahead. It's, it's like, well, we're we're doing a complete circle with a moto with sound and music. And if there was like negative, it's like the negative music changed around the 60s or the 70s where it changed the vibrational frequency. But if it's a negative sound, the, the water will make disruptive um, images that he highly magnified in his photos where it's love and energy, then they will be like snowflakes. So everything is, it has proof as to vibration, energy, healing, sound, frequencies. So anyway, the three terms we want you to become familiar with, alternative medicine, meaning medicine outside the norm, that is recognized by standard medical practice, such as herbal medicine, tinctures, solutions, uh, health drinks, juices, 
all of these kind of things are falling within the health and nutrition industry. And then, of course, you have uh, holistic medicine, which is in basically the healing of the entire person. In other words, it, it sees the problem as being spiritual that is reflected in the physical body. And rather than just going to the, tr- to the treatment of the symptoms of the physical body, it tries to uh, enamor itself unto the core of the essence to essence of that person and therefore derive a cure to the dis-ease in spirit, which is manifesting itself in the body. And then you have integrative medicine. And integrative medicine is a combination of not only a holistic view, but as well as the health industry in regards to all of the various supplements and vitamins that our bodies need and thrive on energetically um, to make a person a more well-balanced and harmonious individual with all of the various vitamin supplements and everything else of that nature and eating well and eating a balanced diet and all that kind of good stuff. So Yes, we take care of that even in cancer. When I was at with my daughter at Moffitt Cancer Center, uh, some of the nurses were telling me how they were going, uh, following grants with integrative medicine. But folks, we're not really allowed in radio uh, land, uh, and, and due to uh, all the ways they're changing up our free speech to really uh, recommend things uh, in a way that you can ingest by mouth. So we just choose not to because that's the line that we used to have with chiropractors touching people and it used to be considered quackery too so you know in the future this water and the fractals and the sounds and vibrations probably will be a science and not a pseudoscience but for right now it's uh, metaphysics and we're happy to have Two uh, metaphysicians join us on this radio station, Richard T. Knight and Marcy Kosich, and uh, hopefully they'll return uh, next Wednesday. And uh, Marcy, I, I know you work uh, in health care providing, and in our Ascension Center group, we have care providers we help. And my daughter, I work with mentally challenged people, but I've also done hospice. But what I figured what I was telling Richard is I work till 2.30 my time, which is 5.30 your time. And usually about the time that you want me to come on, it's about 2.30 anyway. I can always just plug in once I get off of work, go over to a parking lot, and then just dial in and start doing it, you know. So, you know, anytime you guys want me on, I'm more than welcome. I love to teach. I love to empower. I love to learn. That's why I've constantly read for the last 40 years. It's like different avenues on different things, like Emoto is a good example of that, you know. So anytime you guys want me on, you know, I'll I'll try to work around as much as possible. Well, you are an author, so we invite you to our Authors Club online. And, folks, if you join our Patreon, uh, you can go and look at different things we can offer you, including uh, for authors, if we need to put your book up there and help mention it. Uh, we don't mind mentioning books online because we are authors, and that's how I started my group in events. So if you have events out there that are going to start meeting, uh, even if you have to put your people six feet apart and wear masks, you know, we're going to honor all of that, uh, all things allowed by law. Thank you so much for listening to us, and thank you folks that didn't want to talk but are just listening, so they're just quiet, you know. But let me try this person one more time. 708 in Chicago, are you just tuning us uh, tuning us in on your radio station or calling in on Skype, or, or did you want to say anything? Or, okay, that's – okay, Chicago and Vegas are very good at uh, plugging us into their shows when they need filler time or whatever, we've got metaphysics or spirituality. But, folks, I've been out there for years and years, so a lot of people plug me in because I'm open-source syndication on iHeart, Spotify, and Stitcher, and I never know if some of these people wanted to participate. So in the future, if you'd like to participate in our shows, go to patreon.com forward slash Teresa J. Morris. And right now I'm paying the bills, but we're looking to uh, get members in to help us do more shows with blog talk radio and going out all over the world. And uh, I've learned that we're doing a pretty good job at holding a holding. Now tomorrow night is the one Thursdays and 
on Thursdays we'll do readings, and that's our most popular shows. It's like a Dear Abby show for people that want to learn. And some people just love to listen to other people and what their stories are. So if you'd like to, we do it, and uh, we invite you all Thursday. I've got to build the show, so we can't pre-post. But now that I know I've got help, uh, Marcy, I'd like to invite you back on Thursdays as well uh, to see how you do. Oh, of course. And, uh, folks, if you want to be, just like I said, go look at our Patreon and see how you can become a member, our volunteer clergy on Sundays with Richard and I. And I've got a whole lot of people out there tuned in to us that I haven't heard from in a long time or they know that they are a part of ACO Club. So we do have a free social media open source intelligence level. In Facebook, it's Richard T. Knight. Uh, Richard, give them your Facebook name. I, I don't know if it's Rich or I just know you're a friend of mine. So give them your Facebook location. And Marcy, you too. Richard, can you hear me? Are you gone? Richard? It's, uh, yes, you can hear. Yeah, I can hear you. Anyway, it's Richard Knight, and you can identify my profile because I have the Archangel Michael standing there with his sword out in front of him. And uh, I have quite a presence on Facebook. I also run a group called Divinely Inspired Inspirations, which you're welcome to join. It is a very positive, uplifting group, and you're welcome to leave comments or add, you know, posters or uh, all kinds of attributes, whatever. And uh, that's on a growing daily basis. In addition, you are free to contact me at uh, gmail.com. And, of course, you can also reach me um, on LinkedIn, I have a profile as Richard T. Knight, um, and I am on there as Dr. Richard Knight Incorporated, and I do uh, civil, criminal, and paranormal investigations amongst any, many, any, many, and many, many hats of different kinds. Anyway, I have enjoyed being present, and I enjoy being the president, honorarily at least, of ACO Club at this point in time and juncture. So, yes, you will have my lovely voice and my lovely presence. On with Pastor Teresa, oh. Pastor Teresa <laughs> since we have now created the Ascension Church Ohana as officially as of last Sunday. So we just got all kinds of things going on. On to you, yes, Marcy. Yeah, Marcy, would you yeah. leave your Facebook and LinkedIn, please, or whatever else you want? For yeah, people my to LinkedIn's find under Marcy Cossage, and my Facebook is under Marcy Cossage. If you can't find it under there, and you can also Google me. I'm all over the place. Um, then there's also like Marcia Ann McLean. So that was started a long time ago. But, yeah, look those up and be glad to help and heal and all that inform and learn and teach and all that other stuff. Yeah, we're going to so, try to do it all, folks. And I've got TJ Mars Agency, TJ Mars Radio, TJ Mars, ET Radio, uh, ACO Association, American Communications Online. A lot of them that even I haven't had a time to brief Richard or Marcy on our visibility or domains or hosting or uh, blogs or all that. They're all out there, folks. So just hit Google uh, our names, please, TJ Morris or Teresa J. Morris or Marcy Cossett. She's saying K-O-S-I-C-H. Is that correct, Marcy? Yeah, that's it. And Richard T. Knight with a K, like the Knights of Yonder Years, Sir Arthur and the Round Table. And we're going to get him a round table that he and Marcy can do weekly. If we don't do it here with the etymology and the speaking of metaphysics, we'll, I don't know what we're doing Saturday yet. I, haven't even, I can't even think about Saturday yet. So tomorrow is psychic readings, mini psychic readings uh, with me and Rich, and maybe Marcy will join us too. So, Folks, join us I tomorrow. Have a two week leave. Yeah, you I guys... have a two-week leave because my car was okay. stolen, so it's in the shop. So I'm at home for for two weeks. Other than that, I get off at 2.30, which would be I could always dial in right at that time. Okay, we have a volunteer group, folks. So uh, Richard is going to be the president of all the names and keeping up with all the people where Janet He's filling in for Janet, so, uh, but I will do the book, the shows and everything. We can't get everybody doing everything, and believe me, after today, oh, my gosh, I wasn't used to it. Tommy used to run my board. I had no clue how hard doing all this. If you're doing it all yourself when it gets busy, oh, my goodness, you need a crew. So you need a host, a co-host. You a do producer, need a crew. 
a chat room yes. person, and then somebody else to be helping. So we really need a five-man team. So let's work on that, folks. Let's build some teams for every day. Other than that, I'm just going to have to do the best I can and ask Rich to help me. Uh, well, folks, it's amazing. So there's a lot of things to do to run a radio show, not to mention the pre calendar to let people know on your social medias and Facebook and LinkedIn and we make little free things on Canva to show hey these are the people that are coming so again I apologize for yesterday I was out helping people and got stopped in rain and doctors and hair and all kinds of things so we'll uh, try to do the round table on Tuesdays uh, with uh, intuitive people but we're starting today with metaphysics etymology and uh, Marcy brought us toning and she's going to help us with water and uh, all these pseudosciences that Richard's going to help us learn about. So uh, love and light everybody and uh, Richard uh, Thursday tomorrow right? Same time, same station? That's correct. Okay. Love and light everybody. Marcy, excellent. I'm hoping that I get to know you further and we'll go over some more of your books. Oh, we're already connected TJ. Anytime you want to talk to me, just give me a call. All right. Love and light, everybody. Thank you so much. Love and light. Love and light. All right. Bye-bye. Ciao. See you tomorrow.